All right, today's topic is uh, to remove the regulator. So I will demonstrate you later on how to fully understand the regulator. So what the limitation, what a critical adjustment is very limited. I'm going to go really in depth with that one. So you'll have a better chance in adjusting it properly. For now, I'm going to demonstrate the quick way of removing the regulator. First thing, you got to disconnect this trigger, route assembly from this trigger. Alright, over here is a bleed valve. It's got a ball check, they call it. Just drain it, crank it open so you hear air coming out. That's how far you need to go. Don't back it up. Then and don't remove the ball. What I'll do now is I'm going to cock the gun, or cock it, because I want to expel all the air out of it. When the pressure gets so low, the spring will overcome the pressure and you hear a lot of gush of air come out. This will tell you all the air came out already. When it's fully depressurized. Alright, we'll wait for that. It only had about 30 to uh, 20 or 30 bars on it. I don't want to keep you all waiting. You have to bleed out 220 bars. It takes about a couple of minutes. Alright. If you leave this cock fully cocked, when it overcomes the pressure and dumps the air, if you're not ready for it, it's going to scare you a little bit. Well, first time I did it, it did it scared me some. All right. Wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. We'll, we'll back it out a little more. Pretty soon. No, no, no. My mistake. You're supposed to release. There it goes. I forgot to uncock it. Let it sit on the, the valve. So you hear a little gush at the end? Well, it would have happened quicker if I released it from the cock position and release it, let it sit on the valve itself, the pressure set on the valve. Alright. Uh, now, we gotta remove these two Allen set screws. They're big ones. Alright. To do is, uh, there's two here. One is like kind of slanted. When you reassemble this later on, you have to tighten this one here, the slanted one. Because it, it's slanted in a way you put pressure on it, it will force the whole breech assembly forward so it's properly aligned and the o-ring are properly seated here. So you tighten that one down first, then the second one. When you disassemble it, it's the other way around. Well, it doesn't really matter when you disassemble it. Alright. I know there's no pressure in there. I just heard all the rest of it gushed out. If you really want to double check, look at the end of the barrel. Rate zero. Alright, all you need is only a couple turns on his uh, no, screws here. Alright, now you just have to wiggle it outward, back, the breech back assembly back. You can wiggle it this way or this way. Alright, doesn't take that much pressure, see? It's already slid off. I wiggle it side to side. Alright, it comes off. The breech. Now you put the breech to the side. I got my cheek piece tape there, Cammy. Okay, look at the video, make sure you see this. Alright, this is the valve assembly. Now we're going to remove it. When I assemble this, these are hand tight. So it should be hand tight removing it. I've got tape here. So we're disassembling 
my 22 compact. They're easier to disassemble because it's a shorter gun. It's easier to move around the table. All right. If it doesn't come off easily, you get an Allen wrench, stick it in a, a porthole, airport, transfer port of the, the valve assembly. Don't go all the way in, don't go too far deep and touch the, the valve itself. Just a little bit and just turn it. There, it loosens up. And turn the rest by hand. And it's really loose, All right? When it's almost out, if there's a lot of pressure behind there, you can't turn this by hand. All right, that's the valve assembly. Put it over the side. Now, what comes out next? Is your uh, spacer. All right, this valve sits on a spacer, and the regular sits here. Your regulated air is, is, is in this little small area here. All right, that's what the space is for, for your regulated air uh, reservoir. Now we're gonna remove the, okay, remove the regulator. I have, I'll show you what I use. Right, I gotta walk around you real quick. What I use sometimes is this here is a cleaning rod. When you clean a barrel, uh, rimfire barrel, or you get more in a gun shop, is your right? It's threaded here. What it is, I screw in the regulator a little bit, all right, and pull. Your regulator's out, all right. Okay, this is the end of the first section. The next section, I'm gonna. I have not a spare regulator, right? I got one uh, from Steve from Top Air Gun, and uh, I have that for to uh, test. All right, I'm not gonna disassemble this one. This was set perfectly for my preference. This cricket here, this. Compact. It, it, it has about six maximum spread between high and low, and it is very consistent. So I don't want to mess this one up. I had spent a lot of hours adjusting this perfectly. All right, we'll cut this one short, and we'll switch over to uh, totally dismantling the regulator, and show how it functions, how it works, where where areas need to be adjusted. All right. All right, this section here is go in depth, in depth, how the regular functions. All right, when well, you know how it works, you have fully, you have better understanding how to adjust this. All right. When the first thing you do is this snap ring here, it goes to the back of the regulator. All right, you take you remove this. You grab a screw so you pull the whole rotor assembly of the regular. Alright, just gently pull it out. You need to pull it out in this position so you maintain all the disc. Alright, make sure they're all properly. I mean, you pull it out, all scattered everywhere. You don't want to keep track of them. Now you look in there, make sure there's no other disc in there. All right, for high power setting, you should see four sets of disc. One, two, three, four. All right. I remove one set. This one set, all right. There's two discs facing that way. The other disc facing this way. 
to it. Alright? And they're all like this. All the sets are all like that. Alright? Alright, you put that to the side. Next one that comes off, alright, is inside this piece here. What's inside there is this O ring. This O ring seals this rotor assembly all right, of the regulator. Uh, if this goes out, I repaired quite a few, this O ring wears out the most. Alright, because it, it flexes yeah, and it holds unregulated and regulated pressure. Alright, so, and this O ring does a lot of work. Alright, but what holds this what hold this o-ring in place this is brass nut holds it in place over the shaft alright so it seals it on the OD and the ID of this rotor keeps it sealed if the seal fails this o-ring fails you get unregulated pressure on the other other side. It would be like a straight through, you know, pressure. And then this regulator acting is not doing anything. It's practically practically useless. Alright. What's after that? Now we're talking about this this part here. Alright. It's this adjustment screw. Alright, this it's plastic. Delron, where it's plastic. It's acting as a seat. This is a very important piece. You now you stick, you stick your punch in there, and you rotate it to adjust it. Oh, uh, we'll say why that? What, how do you know? How does it do that? Well, let me explain. All right. See there? See this part here of the regulator? it sits on this plastic screw even here you can see where it's been sitting All right it sits like that well when you first look through this there's a hole here it's called a, a unregulated air passage here and here and it goes in All right and it, get, it goes in to the, reg, the rotor shaft. Alright. Let's say this your let's say it's your regulator here, your valve. Alright. Air goes through there and it goes through the regulator. This side will start pressurizing. Let's say when it reaches 130 bar or so, whatever your your disc is set, your disc is act like a spring. So the pressure builds up here and pushes on the whole shaft assembly, the disc assembly. All right. When it reaches a certain pressure, this will travel forward. All right, cause it'll build up pressure. And this is a set point for the seat. All right, when it reaches a certain pressure it would hit this Teflon seat here and sit and stop uh, the remaining air from going in because it's set, let's say, it's set at 130 bar 130 bar, it will seat itself alright, so the pressure will no longer build build up on a regulator side that's how you maintain pressure I mean, maintain the regulator pressure when you, you take your shot, this pressure drops you know it's going to drop, well, 80, 80 bars. Then the spring will push the regular the disc assembly outward. When it does that, the regulated air, the unregulated air, goes back in and pressurizes the side to 130 bar and shuts again. So every time you take a shot, it just like this fluctuates. Open, close, open, close, open, close. All right. This, all right, this, it only travels no more, this, spring, this disc assembly, the rod only travels so far. All right, let's say it, 
if it flexes the spring flexes but the the size of this for a disc it moves like that to open and close the seat all right so when you back this out too much it will no longer seat so you get unregulated air throughout the valve and the regulator all right because if you tight if you back it out too much this rotor assembly gets all flattened out and it sits on a and it sits on the back over there it will no longer travel forward because you all compress all the discs together it's like a spring when you fully compress a spring this will no longer travel forward to sit on the seat all right so be careful when you adjust this you adjust this only one tenth of a quarter of a turn just a little bit and then you have to reassemble it and test it out and when you test it out, you have, you have to adjust the hammer spring accordingly because this the regular and the spring has to be synchronized together. Alright? So it's very important the limit of travel of this seat assembly. Uh, this, the Teflon seat. Alright? Like that. We Put this back together. Make sure you properly lube each one is this the shaft, rotor, and everything. Make sure there's no grits, water buildup, rust. Alright. And this O ring here seals it internally. This O D of the regulator. What seals the inside is this O ring. So un so no unregulated air will pass this rotor assembly without being regulated All right and watch out for this piece here if these leak unregulated air will pass through the the regular and go to unregulated uh, on this chamber it will equalize pressure and the regular is not going to work All right to assemble this well let me tell you what I did on mine since I have it out each one is disc it's like a, a dish it's like a, a frisbee every every uh, metal contact right that would have on each disc I polished it and even the tip even the inside all the way around I polish every one of these so it has more consistent moving back and forth less resistance so it'll move, move more freely all right then i re-lubed up a silicone put it back all right when we assemble it make sure you have it like this put it in all right so what i have here is a, a little screw push it in it kind of snapped that means the o-ring has seated you remove your screw then put back your snap ring so the whole assembly doesn't come out if it doesn't come out it builds pressure and shoots that assembly out all right when that's in flip it over sticky o-ring here all right Then your your o-ring retainer, all right? Screw it in, all right? It goes all the way this deep, passes the uh, portholes, all right? When you when it's bottomed out, you feel it's uh, squeezing the o-ring, and that's far as you go on that, all right? Before you even remove this earlier I mean you should have a marking you know some kind of sharpie some kind of marking 
as a reference point to go back you know if you had a set before perfect this would be nice to set it back as your reference point for adjustment later so I made a kind of special tool like a spanner wrench I kind of misplaced it so I can't screw all the way in I, I could you know screw it in this way all, right. all the way down one lightly squeezes the o-ring then let's pretend right. pretend that's in there and you tighten it down and you screw all the way in where you had the mark before well look like you can need two markings on here all right marking on the side and the depth of gauge how much you had it right if you want to be technical you know you could measure from here to the top of it that's probably more more accurate way before you take this adjustment screw out before you backed it out I used to do that it's more accurate that way all right and you take it down the original setting right and you put it back in reloop the o-ring this goes in I mean oh, sorry. So let me see, you see it this goes in first in the tube then the spacer also uh, I did mod on my 25 cal I put a bunch of holes in here I don't know eight more holes so we have more uh, regulated area because uh, 25 requires more volume so I thought more regulated volume in between the regular you know will help out the consistency of it and it did somewhat all right put this in this push it to all right this is regular right when you push it in it has a a smaller OD inside the air tube it will sit on its edge here so it won't go when you push it, it doesn't go all the way on the other, the other end it sits on the shoulder because it has a shoulder a smaller OD on the air tube and it sits and stops so you cannot over shove it in all right when it stops put spacer in tighten your regulator in all right the video is a little too long and I'm gonna go all the way back and reassemble it all right I hope this helps if something uh, I didn't cover I'm gonna put it on the details section all right I hope this helped and uh, good luck and uh, you have any problem or questions something you're not sure of drop me a note all right